Today I'm uh, d playing a, t a demo on an HXR and I want to explain the difference between our engine monitoring and what's done by most other EFIS manufacturers. One thing that distinguishes us is we've always included an EGT and a CHT time history. I feel the EGT time history is one of the most valuable features of our engine monitoring functions. You can see here above it we have the traditional CHT and EGT bar graphs. Practically all engine monitors provide something like this, graphical with color coding limits and so on. And uh, it really only is providing current temperatures. It shows no trend information and the only way you can make a determination about some subtle difference is if you somehow were able to remember where they were previously, which is practically impossible. Now below it we have a time history. This is the current EGTs and as we go back this is a minute prior and two minutes prior and they're color coded. And you can see that in this demonstration, in, in this actual flight, the EGTs were all moving together as a group. Probably in, when this demonstration was recorded, the engine was changing power or conditions are changing causing causing the power to vary on the engine and, and making the EGTs change. The most valuable part of this time history is the ability it gives you to dis distinguish between a single cylinder failing and the whole engine. If I feel roughness and look down here and when it's one cylinder causing the problem, only one of these traces will deviate significantly. It'll make it very clear and simple to see that's what's happening. On the other hand, if the roughness is caused by something common to the entire engine, all of the EGTs will be influenced and you'll see them all moving as a group up or down, probably down, depending on the engine problem. Being able to distinguish between a single cylinder problem and the entire engine is a very important, very critical information that you can use to determine to make the best choice about how to continue the flight. Do I try to return back to the runway? aim for the nearest field, or, or so on. And although that's the most important feature, and it's so important that I never take off without this displayed. I always have the EGT time history displayed. When I was using the prior display unit, our, our HX, I had one screen on primary flight display, one screen on engine monitor for takeoff always, and I had the EGT time history displayed. With the HXR, I can have my primary flight display and include my time history down here. A less common use, but still very, very valid, is I'm a nervous flyer, and I will often believe, I think that I'm feeling roughness. I will, I will be certain, I think the engine's running rough today. And when I feel that, I want reassurance. It, it distracts me, and I start losing focus on my task of flying the airplane. With the time history, when I sense that I get that feeling, I glance down here, and in this case, if I was to glance down, I would see all the EGTs are running right together. They're moving as a group. There's no erratic operation on any EGT. Everything is fine. It's my imagination. That reassurance then lets me move on and continue my flying and get my tasks done without being distracted by a worry that isn't even founded. So. That's the EGT time history. I encourage users of our equipment to, to practice with it. It's easy to use, very, very valuable. And those of you considering an EFIS should really consider the difference between flying with this and without. Once you've flown with this, you'll never want to fly without it.